greetings and welcome to an LGR bear PC thing. Yeah, this uh, this is your fault. <laughs> you, uh, just uh, the collective you, the internet. It's a weird place to be online, especially as a person known for covering weird old computers and uh, you know, I end up with this kind of thing. So this is the Bearabyte PC, an IKEA teddy bear with a Pentium 3 personal computer installed inside from the early 2000s. IKEA only made the bear though, not the computer itself. This is a one-off, a completely custom job. And the only reason that I know about it at all is uh, really because of, of y'all. In particular, Comp Geek on Twitter put out this post in December of 2022. Not to me in particular, but just put it out there in the ether that this thing existed on Craigslist in Los Angeles, California. The exact opposite side of the country from where I am, but it was such a bizarre thing that so many of you started tagging me and that tweet thread and on Reddit and through emails and just random messages all over the place. It was just uh, something that went a tiny little bit viral, I guess. And I mean, come on, it's a teddy bear computer. It's just bizarre. Um, and it's the only thing like it that exists that I've ever seen. So yeah, uh, good on y'all for uh, letting me know about it because somebody had to save it, right? And I guess it may as well be me. But yeah, it was on the other side of the country. So I just put it out there that like, okay, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to need some help. And thankfully, uh, LGR viewer named Charles got in touch and offered to go and meet with the seller, pay them, pick it up, and then ship it to me. And I would reimburse them for all of that. And yeah, before I knew it, the thing was picked up and packed up in Charles's car. And it was on its way to me pretty soon after that. Um, downright bizarre quick series of events. You know, one day you wake up, you think it's going to be a normal day, all of a sudden there's a weird old Pentium 3 teddy bear online and everybody's like, LGR, you need this. And I'm, for some reason, agreeing with them and all of a sudden a stranger getting in touch with another stranger to package it up and ship it to me. And before long, it was on my doorstep. And my goodness, does this thing <laughs> have a presence in person? Pretty much anybody who's stopped by my house in the past however many months it's been since I got it has simply stopped dead in their tracks to be like, what the heck is that? But it really is pretty much as it appears. It's an Ikea teddy bear, just a teddy bear that's big enough to fit this baby AT case in there. And yeah, there's a full computer case just crammed into the interior of this teddy bear, it's hollowed out, and uh, the rest of it is just a computer, but it's going to need some work. Yeah, just looking around the back of it and everything, when I first got it anyway, there were all kinds of concerning bits of, not really corrosion, but just kind of general nastiness that hadn't been tested in a long time. I just bought it as is, and you know, it's from that era of the capacitor plague. You're getting close to it, so you never know what it's gonna be like inside. In fact, I didn't even know exactly what components were in there. All I had were uh, what was on the Craigslist posting in terms of the description, and some other little bits of information from the actual guy who made it. And speaking of which, this is a creation by a Mr. Peter Isaacson. And this is his third case mod, according to his Penfold website. He actually made this for his wife originally back in the day, and it eventually ended up going to his kid later on, where it was bolted to a chair, also from Ikea. And yeah, there's a couple of holes in the bottom of the case where that presumably took place. And despite the order taken status on his website, this is the only Barabyte computer that was ever made. He was prepared to make more if somebody were to commission one, but by that point, uh, Ikea discontinued this teddy bear, and so this was the only one that was ever made. So uh, quite special in its own bizarre way, indeed. Uh, it's actually also a, a little bit lighter colored. I was wondering about that because it looks kind of like a different one than the picture that's on his website, but that's because the fur has actually faded over time. I don't know if it was in the sunlight or what, but yeah, there's there's bits of it where you can still see darker fur underneath and stuff, but eh, it just sort of lightened up, bleached itself a bit over the decades. That being said, I did actually receive a, a note through email 
from Mr. Isaacson himself with some more details. So let me just read this. Uh, firstly, he's apparently an LGR viewer, and so he got pretty excited once he realized that it was me that bought this thing. So you never know, man. <laughs> this is a very strange audience I've cultivated, and I, I quite enjoy it. But uh, yeah, he says, with that out of the way, I wanted to give some background information and uh, provenance on this unique computer. So he says a few years after he married, um, his wife expressed interest in getting her own desktop. They married in 98 and she also liked teddy bears. And so at one point they were at their local Ikea and he spotted the plushie that would become the Bearbyte PC. So yeah, he just bought it, took it home and started uh, customizing the insides of it and uh, stuck it in a uh, Baby AT Tower case bought from the local PC Club store. I'd never heard of there, but apparently it was a computer retailer back in the day. The extra faux fur was uh, sourced from a local fabric and sewing store, so all of this right here, that's uh, not part of the bear, so it is actually slightly different colors and tones, but you know, it still looks pretty good, honestly, so good match. And the cover then gets the fake fur attached with 777 spray adhesive and clamped with a lot of clothespins followed by some grooming. It apparently used a cordless beard trimmer. That's just wonderful. <laughs> this whole thing is so silly, I love it. Uh, he says, now for the fun part. I bring in the entire case mod to a local PC guru to get the internal components installed. Talk about raised eyebrows. Yeah, I can imagine. Uh, he says, uh, the Barabite served his family faithfully for years, but the inexorable advances in technology and subsequent versions of Windows rendered it obsolete, and he didn't know of Linux back then. So, uh, yeah, at the moment there is no hard drive, there's no operating system at all. So, that's one thing we're gonna have to add, but <laughs> really, cleaning and getting everything tidied up was my biggest priority here, because it didn't appear to have been cleaned out inside Maybe ever, I don't know. It was pretty caked up with grime and nastiness. So let's get right to that. All right, well, there we go. <laughs> so odd seeing fur on the front panel like that. And uh, well, we just got a, a very empty bear here. That's a little disturbing. Just a tunnel straight through a bear corpse. Well, first thing I'm noticing here is this bending, almost like a slight crushing warp to the entire chassis, just barely, <laughs> barely. You know what? Anyway, uh, yeah, this was uh, mentioned by Mr. Isaacson. The front of this was not attached anymore. It looks like a, a piece of the plastic came uh, undone from the front of it, but I think, yeah, when the actual bear itself is attached, it sort of holds that in place. We have uh, one of these long slot holder things that came off too, but that doesn't look broken, so it should just snap back on. Yeah, pretty much. It's just the actual chassis is bending, so. <laughs> yeah, all kinds of things are out of shape. But you know, whatever, it's got a bear attached to it. I'd probably be a little out of shape too. Just noticing the power supply there. Dear Computer Company. That's a new one on me. A DR230C. Uh, I don't notice anything about wattage on there, but I'm assuming 230 watts. <laughs> At least with this furry case on front, it's kind of like a, a natural blanket for it to slide around on. I have an LG CDRW drive here, March 2002. Manufacture date, it is IDE. In fact, I think everything in here is, yeah, it's all IDE. So yeah, that right there, a generic sort of DVD-ROM. We got a ZIP 250 drive, three and a half inch, presumably high density floppy. And these painted buttons. Yeah, this was a, a thing that uh, the builder was keen on doing. Red power button, I very much agree with the sentiment there. I, I miss uh, old computers having that. Nice big red switch especially, but you know, nice clicky hard AT on off button is nice too. Green for turbo, speed, gold reset. Got a key lock there, presumably no key. Certainly haven't noticed a key in here. Oh, here's a one of those little stems. Yeah, I think from the front panel where that just sort of popped off where it was bending. Looks like it was tried to be glued or epoxy back into place. But anyway, 
Yeah, I don't see a, a key necessarily in here, but that looks like one that probably just locks you out of the BIOS or the startup or something. You can just unhook that from the motherboard if needed. <laughs> it's so trippy looking at this furry case, man. It's like Chewbacca mated with a Circuit City store. Oh, heck yeah. This is one of those motherboard trays that it just comes out the side here. And so you don't have to, yeah, I always like seeing these. Again, though, with the bending. Wow, it totally bent out of place and tore this screw off of there. I guess that was just like the pressure of the, the bear suit. <laughs> the, the pressure of the bear suit. It's like the title for a, a memoir of a theme park mascot actor. All sorts of stuff plugged in. Let's just get all that out of there. Wow, well, there's almost, there's like no ports except for an AT keyboard port actually integrated onto the motherboard. Oh, these IDE cables have clips on them. It's interesting. Yeah, look at that. I don't know if I've ever seen that before. Not on these old style ones. I had some from like the mid 2000s that had those, but those were very like round, transparent ones. All right, well, lots of SIS chipsets. Yeah, this appears to be a PC chips motherboard. Is that M748? LMRT revision 3.5. So right off the bat here, we have a Pentium 3 as the CPU this is one of those slot one versions. You could put it either here or here, depending on the slot or socket really. So PGA 370 here or slot one here. Uh, that, that places this closer to 1999, 2000 in terms of when these parts come from. Just check out all of these headers. So many little headers. Again, there's no real integrated ports except for uh, this right here. Five pin AT keyboard connector is integrated for the IO and everything else is broken out into those little breakout cables and uh, PCI slot deals. <laughs> Pretty standard really for, uh, it's a baby AT form factor here. So I have actually done a build that is kind of similar-ish, but that was using hardware from a couple years prior. It's definitely a baby AT case. So uh, got a 16-bit ISA here, one PCI slot. Thank goodness, it is a CR2032 for the battery. Uh, again, lots of SIS chipsets. And uh, what is this? C3DX HSP56 seems to be integrated audio. Oh yeah, yeah, there's totally uh, audio and game port over here as well as, yeah, modems, ethernet. Yeah, didn't even look at the IO in detail earlier, but Check it out, these are all breakout and PCI brackets that just connect to the headers on the motherboard. So we've got serial in parallel there, 15-pin VGA, looks like Ethernet, a game port, sound output, dial-up modem of some kind, USB 1.1, and PS2 mouse and keyboard, in addition to the 5-pin uh, keyboard right there. So, <laughs> actually no, that's PS2 mouse and infrared. Only 5-pin AT for the keyboard. Turbo's not even plugged in, but I don't even know if it would have much use on a system this speed. All the rest of the front panel stuff seems to be. I'm gonna take a note of where all that goes. A couple of IDEs here. Oh yeah, we just, I just noticed the, uh, the 20 pin plus 12 pin, two different styles of power. Yeah, I just, I really like this era of boards because it's right in between the older like AT and then moving on to ATX. That's just neat. And thankfully all the capacitors are looking pretty good too in terms of shape and lack of leakage. Of course, that doesn't mean anything necessarily, but hopefully they'll still be okay, at least for some testing. And we have RAM, what do we got going on here? All right, some mismatched sticks of uh, PC100 SD RAM here, 64 megs and 256 megs on this module. So we got 320. A CD-ROM audio header, we'll let's get that out of there. But um, yeah, this is, this is fascinating. Uh, a little more interesting than I thought it would be. So, hey, that's a nice, nice surprise. Hope it works. I'm definitely going to get it all cleaned up. Replace that battery. Let's go ahead and get that out of there. Yeah, I'm assuming that's probably never been replaced. CR2032. Uh, yeah, get this all cleaned up and uh, we'll do a quick test. And, of course, test the power supply, too. Who knows? Maybe deer computer power is really good. Runs like a deer and it's still going after all this time. I don't know. We'll see. Let's clean this crap up. Right, we've got some serious cleaning to do, so let's sink our claws into it. 
The disassembly began rather easily, with the motherboard only having a couple of screws and the rest held in place with slide-out plastic posts. And the front of the case was barely holding on, as there was only a single plastic bracket intact on the fuzzy front panel keeping it on with one screw. And the rear port's front drive devices and the power supply are all very accessible and easy to unscrew with this case design. It's just all out in the open. With that, I took the core chassis outside and gave it a quick dusting with the air compressor and provided each surface a much needed scrubbing and wipe down to roll back the years of caked on nastiness. And other than some slight metal corrosion that appears to have resulted from a spill of some kind, it cleaned up rather well. Same goes for the hairy front panel and the bear itself, with all that thick fur storing up who the heck knows, I don't want to think about it. It didn't smell bad or feel sticky or anything, but just knowing how dusty plushies and stuffed animals can get over the years, yeah, a dry cleaning of sorts was very much in order. And uh, as evidenced by all the random little bits of debris and decades of detritus flying off into the wind, well, this ended up being pretty satisfying. A little surreal to watch this footage. <laughs> what am I even doing with my life? But still, satisfying indeed. Especially with how much happier the bear looks now, just look at that face. I also gave the power supply and processor assembly a gentle dusting while I was out there, really just to get the largest dust bunnies out of the way before taking it inside. As for the motherboard and the drives, I brought them each down to the workshop and gave them all a nice brushing, dusting, and wiping, with the nastiest parts being the area around where the processor fan used to be, and the fronts and tops of the drive bay devices. Yeah, stuff got gross. Oh, and those ribbon cables and rear I.O. things were pretty disgusting too, but this is all par for the course. Thankfully, all normal stuff here. No smoky smells, dead critters, or dubious residues. No notable corrosion or dreadful damage. Just the usual gunk and grime that computers build up across years of service. Really, the biggest thing that stood out was the DVD-ROM, which is the only component to have yellowed to a distracting degree, so hey, why not RetroBright? It's not a part I care much about if it gets messed up, and it's a fantastically sunny, warmy day out here, so some water and peroxide and a plastic bin should lighten things up at least a tad closer to where they should be, and look similar to the other drives. I also wanted to check the Pentium 3 where it makes heatsink contact, and after sliding that apart, we get a glimpse of that lovely chip and all its 500 megahertz goodness halfway to a gigahertz. Imagine that. It appears to use a really thin little thermal pad as opposed to paste, and I'm sure it's fine, but I gave it a tiny unnecessary dollop of Formula 7 compound just because I already had it nearby and I felt like it. And with that put back together and snapped back onto the motherboard, I went ahead and dropped a new CMOS battery in there and clicked the two RAM modules back in place. And that's that! Our still furry, yet significantly cleaner bear is basically ready for reassembly. I hope it feels as refreshed and clean feeling as those unsettling Charmin mascots. They need to stop lying, no one that hairy is happy with toilet paper alone. At this point, I whipped out a multimeter and prepared to test the power supply, and while it does power on and spin up the fan, perhaps unsurprisingly, we've got a problem. Oh dear. Oh, that's supposed to be 12 volts. And that's supposed to be 5! Ooh. Yeah, other than the minus 5 volt rail, everything else was out of whack. Now, granted, I didn't have load applied, but considering how iffy the thing sounded and smelled already, and the general grungy vibes I was getting, I was simply happier replacing it with a new one, so that's what I'm gonna be doing. Nope. 
And from here, the reassembly begins, without any due diligence testing the motherboard first. Because screw it, I'm feeling down to potentially waste a lot of time and keep that part a surprise, I guess. So with the board mounted back onto the side plate and the front panel things reconnected, I went ahead and reattached all of the rear I.O. breakout plates. Thankfully an easy enough task since they're all unique connectors and keyed to plug in one way only. Uh, the only thing I left out is the modem since I don't really need one, but also the cable for it is missing, so whatever, I'll take the extra space. And with things back in place, we have three brackets free now. And having mismatched blanks here would drive me nuts, so I'm gonna go ahead and drop in three brand new ones. Ah, there, much better. As for the five and a quarter inch and three and a half inch drives, the only one I'm swapping out for now is the floppy due to the mismatched faceplate. It may still function, so I'll set it aside for a future project and install this Citizen high density drive instead. The off-white faceplate isn't a perfect match, but it's within the beigey range of all the others. On that note, the DVD drive faceplate is finished retro brighting and it's looking way better. And not perfect, but a lot better than the pea stained look that we had before. I'm quite pleased with it. And lastly, there is no hard drive. It was all removed before I got it. So I'll be dropping in this Maxdoor 120 gig IDE drive from 2005. It's an almost era appropriate solution. And plus the idea of a teddy bear booting up with hard drive sounds amuses me. Speaking of which, it's all hooked up and ready to test. So fingers crossed, paws crossed, whatever. Let's see this fluffy beast hopefully roar back to life. All right, so I don't have everything fully hooked up yet. I really just wanna see if the dang thing powers on because I really haven't tested the motherboard or anything else yet. Here goes nothing. Okay, got fans spinning. Hey, and we have a display and RAM test. 320 megs. Uh, we have replaced the battery, so we'll have to Go into the BIOS setup. Ah, standard. Amy BIOS, simple utility 1.20e. Okay. Ah, it's the year 2000 again. How nice. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I guess we'll just leave it to the basic settings for now. I don't actually have the floppy drive uh, plugged in anyway. Everything else should be, yeah, pretty well set to just automatically detect on this kind of thing. So I guess we'll just go ahead and set the time. Not that I remember what today is. Hey, Flurbnerp, what is everything regarding date and time? It's Tuesday, May 23rd, 2023. It's 4.12 p.m. Okay, thanks. Yeah, cool. Sweet. I detected all the stuff I actually have plugged in. Novell Netware. I'm assuming due to the integrated Ethernet, reminds me I need to um, probably disable that modem so that's not installed. Maybe disable that too, I don't know. These things can always add a lot of time to the startup. All right, let me test the... Uh... Oh, yeah, I was afraid of that. So the optical drives are not ejecting. Actually, as I was doing the cleaning and took the face plates off to you know clean them up, I noticed that each one had belts and just iffy looking mechanisms for eject and just it looked like rubber degradation beginning to really set in. So I was curious if they would even eject. Neither of them do. So I do have a, another just spare drive on hand. I think this one is good because I had a feeling this might happen. Yeah, the DVD drive was the one that looked the most suspect with the bad belt and yeah, yeah, that's how it goes. Oh, hey, I was getting this footage and this one wasn't ejecting, now it is, so. Cool. You know what, I'm just gonna take the opportunity, just put the bear on top of the bear computer. Complete the look because this thing is all hooked up internally, everything is as it will be, I mean, the DVD is still not working and uh, the floppy and zip drive haven't been tested, but everything else is hooked up that can be hooked up. So I feel confident enough with an OS. And of course the question is, which one are we gonna go with? 
Uh, you know, Windows XP, I can imagine that maybe was on here at some point, considering it was built in 2001-ish from what I gather, but it was probably 98, right? I mean, that would be the obvious choice for a Pentium 500 megahertz and a baby AT case like this and all the other specs that it has, but uh, it's a bare computer. Let's pick an absolute bear of an operating system. We're gonna go with Windows Me. Yeah, seriously. Got the CD ready to go and all its lovely shininess and a boot disc. This will be a good test of the floppy drive. Uh, yeah, let's do this. Oh wow, that is much quieter <laughs> with the bear on top. All that fur and foam insulation probably making it a bit warmer too. Anyway, uh, notice this 25 here now. I didn't see it earlier because it was turned around, but yeah, I knew there was some kind of a display there for the turbo, but didn't know what it would show or if it was just two digits. It is. You can customize that to any two uh, numerals that you want using jumpers around back, but it's not doing anything really at the moment because turbo is not even used on here. So um, yeah, I've got the boot disk here. Get that going. And we've got our lovely CD. Oh, come on. This is what it was doing earlier. Eject. I think it's just getting stuck or something. Stuck on like, yeah, I don't know. It's fine. We have floppy and hard disk noises coming from our, our woodland creature's chest. It's magnificent. And there we go. Okay, well, I guess we will let it format drive C and hope that's successful. I have not tested that hard drive. This is a very irresponsible build. Don't do this. 63% so far so good. Gotta say, this is my first time formatting a bear or so. You just never know. It is working. <laughs> Bears, 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 bears. All right. Well, promising. I'm excited. I mean, as excited as I can be for Windows Millennium Edition. Whatever, man. It's on a bear. Yeah, installation complete. And not getting any sound or graphics drivers. Not terribly surprising. I was curious what it would come up with, you know? <laughs> Considering the PC chips motherboard integrated stuff going on. But everything else seems to be, yeah, pretty good. Ethernet, audio, of course, we got generic display drivers going there. All right, that's cool. Um, yeah, well, I will uh, go ahead and see if I could track down fitting drivers online. <laughs> oh man. I just realized we can put this into hibernation mode. <laughs> How appropriate is that for a bear PC anyway? Whoa, what the heck? Well, apparently it makes that sound when uh, it's powered off. That's great, just great. Alright, well, all the things are working as well as they can. That sound, it's really bad. Um, I mean, it works, got the proper drivers and everything, but uh, this is one of the worst sound chips I think I've ever experienced, uh, despite this kind of neat looking little audio control panel we got going on. But yeah, this right here, okay. What we've got is this CMI8738 thing with no legacy support, <laughs> like like just none. So, uh, you know, I've seen versions of this chip equipped with some better stuff, but no, you pretty much just get very simple Windows audio and a game port, and that's, that's all you get. The display uh, built-in graphics thing is this SIS 620. Uh, let me see here. 
set to uh, share approximately 7.5 megabytes. It's set to eight megs in the BIOS just to, you know, just take some memory for itself from the system. But you know, it does support Direct 3D. Here we go. So that is software rendering and hardware acceleration. So, you know, it does have a 3D accelerator. Uh, it's just very basic stuff. But yeah, that audio, oh my goodness. <laughs> it's so impressively bad. Uh, yeah, you, you do not get any backwards compatible emulation of Sound Blaster or anything else. It will just not detect anything for DOS games. Uh, you do have a general MIDI implementation on 330, so that's something. It's actually not the worst. Yeah, just your standard Roland licensed GS wavetable synth. But that happens every time it stops playing. In fact, it happens when a lot of things stop playing. <laughs> Usually hitting the ding will make it go away. Yeah, but... Anyway, this thing is terrible. So uh, literally any sound card would be better than this. Well, you know. That's what it comes with, and I wanted to test it, and now we have tested it. Uh, another thing that's kind of amusing, anytime you use something with the PC speaker, you can barely hear it. Let me get the microphone right up to it. Yeah, due to all of the, the bareness of it, it is completely dampened to the point where you can barely hear it at all, despite it being, you know, a good two inch cone that actually sounds as it should when it's out in the open, but now you just can't hear anything underneath the bear. And no, there is no ad lib emulation FM synth attempt <laughs> of any kind. So you, you really don't get any sound blaster or ad lib kind of capability in DOS, DOS mode, or uh, just running here under the Windows version prompt. It's just not there. Anyway, working bear computer, such as it is, so let's play some bear games. And uh, yeah, why not this one here? Good old fatty bear is one adventure game. Birthday surprise. And you're gonna be noticing a lot of the popping just due to that sound, the chip being terrible. The implementation, the driver, something. Good night, Caleb. There's a lot of work to do before Kayla wakes up. I want to make her a big, beautiful birthday cake. Oh, will she ever be surprised? I better get busy, too. I've got a lot of decorating to do. Yeah, so much like crackling and popping in between all these sounds and the music is just, it's trying so hard. <laughs> all right, we gotta put some eyeballs on the cabbage. Good stuff. An adventure game about a, a teddy bear that comes to life in the middle of the night when nobody's looking uh, seemed quite appropriate to cover. I wonder where this goes. Here goes nothing. Oh crap. We're just going down the dumbwaiter. Alright. Look out below! <laughs> hey, I found the garage door opener. I'm just gonna imagine our bear computer does this in the middle of the night. Just going through my house. You know. Not creepy at all. And you know, this might be pushing the uh, the definition of a bear-centric game a little bit, but why not? Who cares? I make the rules. MechWarrior 2, Ghost Bears Legacy. Okay, let's go to the mission computer. Do a thing. Dogwell, Timberwolf, Summoner, Grizzly. I would normally go Timberwolf, but I mean, it's a Grizzly. We got to. All right, you dead. 
Yes. Let's go. Oh, that mouse is sensitive. Uh oh. Probably shouldn't be chaining everything with. Oh. oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, blowing all my heat sinks immediately. Ah, uh, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, <laughs> it's been a while. <laughs> oh no, give me a commando so I can go through training again. That was embarrassing. Uh, you know, yes, embrace cowardice. Uh, yeah, I clearly am not prepared for that. Wow, this, yeah, every single time you do just about anything. So, um, eh, if there was one thing that I would change, it will change. It is gonna be, come on, I'm left clicking. Why is it doing that? Anyway, <laughs> it's quirky stuff going on. Yeah, I just gotta drop like literally any, probably a PCI sound card in here. Um, and then that'll be uh, way better than, than just this terrible thing that it has going on. Yeah, I remember this kind of thing happening all the time on computers in the late 90s. <laughs> early 2000s so uh it's not exactly unique to this or anything but it's been a while since i've experienced it and uh, i'm not nostalgic for it at all it's terrible so yeah definitely gonna be replacing the sound card otherwise yeah i'm gonna put some of the video stuff through its paces and we'll just sort of wrap the video up here i think because my goodness what a machine. The idea of sticking a PC in a teddy bear 20 something years ago. I mean, you see why I had to have it, right? And I am pleasantly surprised that it works. And yes, the zip drive also seems to be functioning. I mean, I haven't really tested it too much, but stuff shows up straight away. I didn't even have to install any drivers. But anyway, yeah, that's uh, all for this video. I hope that you've enjoyed seeing this complete silliness get cleaned up and restored, put back together and almost completely working. Just a few minor little things. LEDs that don't light up and the DVD drive and you know, a sound card crap. But otherwise, yeah, it's nice to have a working machine show up and to see it hold up as well as it has, all things considered. The Ikea bear and the fur are still firmly attached. And despite the bent chassis and broken plastic bits, it still holds together just fine as it is without modification or further repair. Now, some of you may be curious about cooling. I was as well. And despite any modern airflow considerations in this case, it seems fine idling at 35, 36 degrees Celsius after warming up a while and gaining another five or six degrees under heavier loads. Yeah, I don't see much heat risk here, considering how little is going on inside the case. And this is far below the 80 degrees that these 500 megahertz Pentium 3s are rated to handle. And the hard drive seems fine too. And now I guess this is the LGR Bear PC. I'm fully anticipating bringing this to a show or two in the future. So look out for this at future appearances, I guess. And if you like this type of video, then, well, you're in the right spot. This kind of nonsense is very much my jam, or honey, would be appropriate for a bear. Anyway, I don't know, odds and stuff like this is very much what LGR is all about. So if you like this, do stick around. And as always, thanks for watching.